Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was, there was just some laugh. Some laugh. <laughs> well, no promising all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. So we're a bit hungover today, uh, the three of us. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask this, because, like, I'm bad for... See, see, when I used to go to London, and, like, I'd kind of be staying with my mates, so let's see, after I'd gone a Saturday or something, I'd go, and I'd be fucking hungover the next day but I'd usually be doing like some sort of trial spot somewhere mm-hmm. on the Sunday and I've fucked up a lot of gigs just from being hung over and I, I cannot will myself to have a good gig when I'm hung over because I just don't have the energy and if, like, everything see even try to like do like a wee movement or something it just feels like so much of an effort yeah. I just fucking can't do it so like do you, how do you find gigging hungover can you get through it when you've been doing it as long as I have you, you just start drinking again. like generally start drinking it's the only thing you can do so the solution like, is to become an alcoholic basically <laughs> aye, aye, that's your only option now eh uh, no, like, I, I know what you mean. London's the worst as well, because there's been so many times where I've... Uh, when you first start getting down to London, because no London club ever gives you accommodation, Aye. you end up looking for the cheapest thing. Yeah. And uh, so you're in, like, a hostel with, like... Because you look at it and go, right, it's, a, it's £60 a night for that hotel, but it's £30 a night. And I only need to stay with twenty four other people in a room, <laughs> so it's a no brainer. But yeah, and you get kicked out at ten in the morning, and yeah. there's very little to do yeah, when you're away. Get steaming again, aye. Yeah, need to get steaming. Yeah, I suppose you don't have the car or anything down there. You just no, get exactly. The tube, Plus, so. you're in London, so yeah. I did that in Manchester two nights ago, just like out drinking alone because I can't because I can't face going back to that fucking hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's quite good. I, I thought about writing a book once. I remember sitting in, I think it was in, I can't even remember, fucking Chester or something. Uh-huh. And I was getting the last train back into Manchester to then get a night bus home. And I was sitting in a pub right by the station and I was like, I should write a book going shite pubs I've had one pint in <laughs> just mental fucking town boozers where like there's already karaoke on and it's seven and you're just getting stared at the whole time you're there we went to Carlisle on a stag do and it was like honestly one of these sort of shite boozers pure blacked out windows it was like three in the afternoon karaoke's on and stuff like what who why? why That's one of the here? worst stag do's I've ever heard. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> Who the oh, fuck man. goes to Carlisle on a stag do? Like? First stop in the train for Glasgow, and or like or after Motherwell. It's not a big this will do. Yeah, this will do. It's not that far away. I've got one of the grimmest nights of my life in Carlisle. Yeah, mm. fucking shite home. Yeah, yeah. Because nice. I, well, I grew up in Dumfries. Oh, aye. So oh. Carlisle's like the nearest city to us. Aye. So yeah, oh, I've had aye. some. Grim, grim nights in Carlisle. <laughs> so would you just go there for a night out? And oh, aye, that was like a. Would that have been your first, so the first time you went to a nightclub or something? Would you went to Carlisle? I would be. Well, no, because we've got nightclubs in the free smart. <laughs> fuck, <laughs> fuck, do you think you are? Sorry, like, 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 pardon my ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had three when I was growing up. So, uh, but no, Carlisle was like Carlisle was like our Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Carlisle, baby. How long away is it? Like in a taxi. And a taxi, a taxi would be about 50 minutes. All right. But so train's, train's 25, so. But that's, well, if you're going to a nightclub in Carlisle and you're getting the train home, but you're in for half an hour. And then... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because the trains would start again about five in the morning. So then ah, you, could, you could carry it over and smart. then get there. But I mean, and because it's England, can they stay open later? And then... Yeah. Really? Yeah. Fuck's sake. You can go buy cans in Carlisle after 10 and then come exactly, back. Exactly, yeah. aye, exactly. <laughs> Crossing the border That's to get a few went. tinnies. So we probably should say we are joined by Mark Nelson today. Yeah. Thank Hello. you very much for joining us, Mark. Um, as I say, we're pretty hungover today. Actually, Stuart's got the tenant socks on. I was just get, get the badge in. Uh, <laughs> we were at a wee tenant's brewery tour yesterday. Um, never done it yourself. I've done the tenant's brewery tour. I think tenant's gets a bad... Press. Aye, it does. I like tenants. It's nice, eh? I think it's fine we for got, a... We got the unpasteurized pints last night. Mm-hmm. That's, unpasteurized? That's why we feel so shy. Uh, yeah. I, I thought that was the kind... Of, you know how you go to, like, Germany and it's like you won't get a hangover here because it's some sort of filtered, filtered different or something? I don't know. I thought it would be the same last night, but I feel fucking shit. Aye. This is the you worst can get I've a hangover in Deniston, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, easily. Uh, to be fair, I mean, we did go out after the brewery as well. I don't Aye. know how much you can on them. Yeah. So what's unpasteurised? Like... I never even knew lager was pasteurised. It was just milk. I didn't realise that's <laughs> no, what we were drinking I thought, last night until he yeah. said it. 
But that's what they said, wasn't it? Well, I wasn't listening to that. Am I making this up? They said something about past. I heard that word. I don't know. Aye, they said that it was like the ones you would get in a pub or whatever is pasteurised or in tins and it tastes different and these ones are unpasteurised, I'm sure. I think I was at the end when we were worried that Paul Dock had fell into a vat of beer like I got his look. So I did go missing for like five minutes. <laughs> so you're all right ha- hung over. Like, how do you find being drunk? Oh, like, do you, were you all right having a couple of pints on stage? Oh, aye, aye. Like, I, this I is don't like, like fucking Shane McGowan or something. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I don't really mind it, man, because uh-huh. like I'll never get, I'll never get wrecked, but I know how much I can have before I. What's the I most on. drunk you've ever been on stage? Whoa, uh, it would probably be a festival. Aye. Um, That's the only time I'll sort of break the rule of like. No, I'd, I would maybe only ever have one, but see the fringe, like if you're doing aye. a late night gig, or yeah, see aye. if I finish my solo show. And pals are about. I'll go yeah. and have. I'll fucking drink and I'll go up on stage. Yeah, I'm yeah. not having a shite night out because I've got a ten spot. At fucking. Midnight. I know exactly. Yeah. I know. Exactly. Aye. That's Aye. getting in the way of my Aye. night. Aye. Aye. Plus, you think you're immense. <laughs> like yeah. it really doesn't matter how well you do. You just. Yeah. I couldn't give a shit when I'm <laughs> pissed. Yeah. I've uh, been in some hell of a states on festivals like aye. Oh, fucking unbelievable. Like, <laughs> staggering babbling shite. Do you know what I'm actually quite envious of? Because this sort of stopped just as we were kind of starting or at least starting to get to the point we'd get these gigs. It's like you've done a lot of music festival mm. gigs like then stand up and that and like we've never I've never done that anyway. Like that done must have been download. class to get to fucking <laughs> It's all right. Like I mean, the gigs are horrendous. <laughs> like they're horrendous. Well, some of them are all right. Rock Ness was amazing. Mm-hmm. That used to be really brilliant. Was that uh, in a separate tent, or was it? Yeah, it was yeah. really well done as well. It was like a huge. Well, it was not a huge tent. It was maybe fit about two hundred people in it. Aye. But it was actually, well, it was Brett Vincent that ran it, and it was actually put together knowing how to work it. Whereas, like Tina the Park was just. I mean, it was genuinely like there was a Tina the Park we did where. Uh, they asked us, we, we had to do 45 minutes each, right? Fuck so it turned great. up on the Friday and Ian Sterling went on and did 45 to like four people. Oh God, and it was fucking torture. And then it was me and Billy Kirkwood just said to them, look, this isn't going to work. <laughs> How about we just do an hour show and we all do 15 each? And they were quite happy with that. But, yeah. But they're, they're like, festivals can be amazing. But but it's because it's still class. You're there. Yeah, and you're getting, you know what yeah. I mean. So you do that performance, and then you get do you get to go the whole weekend and go and see. Oh, aye, that's it. And you get to take a pal as well. Like so, yeah. I would always always bring a pal with me that was, was just basically getting free drink backstage, free <laughs> ticket to the festival, and then aye. free rain everywhere. And sometimes you do get actual backstage. Like it. I was going to ask, yeah. do you get to sort of hang about with like the fucking Foo Fighters or whatever? <laughs> you don't, like, no, you don't really get. There's very very few times Dave Grohl comes in to check out your set. Like, <laughs> so uh, it was one of those four people watching Ian Sterling, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Dave Grohl. <laughs> but it is class. Like that was what Rock Ness was good for. Because like I met, I met Suggs backstage nice. uh, which mm. was class I met Example as well How is I, he? I don't know who the fuck he was <laughs> <laughs> some kind of pretend to be Example yeah. Yeah. <laughs> meeting Suggs was quite cool man who's Suggs uh, again? Guy from Madness. Madness oh fuck yeah. Aye. Oh, so that, that was quite class and then I saw Kasabian yeah. uh, backstage that's a big one for you that was that was a huge one yeah just a lead singer battering fuck at his girl <laughs> 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 Serge's sound, didn't he? Serge is really cool. Do you know yeah. who's really good pals with Kasabian? Tom Steed. Really? He hangs out with them. That I doesn't surprise me. No, it's amazing. Like. Kasabian hang out with Tom Steed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that, I remember Jojo telling me once, because we were talking about Tom, and I think Tom's incredible, and they said that uh, the difference between Tom and every other comedian is, because I, I was doing a weekend in the Cardiff, it was the first weekend I'd ever done in the Cardiff Glee, and a... Uh, me and Carl Donnelly were watching Stade go on, right? And everyone had done fine, right? It had been, cra- it had been class. And then Stade went on at the end, and this was before Stade had, had been on anything. Right. And he just came out and he went, That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're very lucky to have me tonight. <laughs> and we were like, How the fuck does he do that? And then Jojo said to me, She was like, Every other comedian goes on and wants the audience to like them. Yeah. Whereas Tom comes on. And the audience want him to like them. Yeah. And that's a complete difference. That's like, brilliant. That's, that's cheating. That's <laughs> that's just, you can't be that yeah. cool. Cool. And be, but he's fucking amazing as Aye. well. 
<laughs> One time I was in the loft, me and Roscoe went in the loft bar at the fringe, and uh, Tom came in. He's like, hey guys, Roscoe Mark, meet Dynamo. And he was just standing with Dynamo. <laughs> 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 it was funny though, because I think Dynamo, he's obviously went, I'll take you up to this artist bar, you'll meet all these famous comedians. And then it was like, <laughs> Dynamo, it was just me and Roscoe. <laughs> Dynamo was just laughing. <laughs> just disappears. <laughs> i done a download festival, you ever done that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what do you think of that? I quite like downloads. Yeah. I, I love uh, heavy metal music. Right. So I did it. Uh, I went the first time I went to it. Um, I went to the comedy tent because the comedy tent's only like it's like the Wednesday and the Thursday before the yeah, band start. That's right, which yeah. is a good way to do it. Yeah, and I saw someone throw a bottle of piss at Paul Perry, <laughs> and this was when Perry was still drinking, and Perry caught it and downed oh, it. Oh my it's god, fucking incredible man! That is fuck's sake. Yeah. Did just heavy metal? How did they react when he drank? Drank the piss. Well, how did the crowd react? Both. Well, how did he? Oh, react? Really? Perry would have been fucking. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Ah, he could. Uh... Did you enjoy it? No. no, no. I can't imagine heavy metal fans being into your comedy. Don't say that personally, but no, because I was trying to get them on side. I was like, oh, you're looking forward to the pigeon detectives. <laughs> <laughs> it was like fucking Metallica headlining or something. <laughs> and they were like, what? And then I was doing jokes about fajita kits and like, who is this? <laughs> did you did you go to see Oasis in Loch Lomond? Mm-hmm. That must have been fucking amazing, man. It's the best day of my life. <laughs> I, say, I say this all the time, and it, but it's, I'm genuinely true. Like it, life has gone downhill since that day. <laughs> what what uh, year would that be? 1996, Class. Saturday wow. the third of August. Is that Ballock Park? No, yeah, because no. they because that's like quite a like, fucking famous gig they done. And so that would have been had their second album come out yet. Or what point? Um, were they at so uh, Morning Glory had just come out. Aye. Uh, and it was the weekend before they did Nebworth. Yeah, right. Uh, so it was like a warm up for Nebworth. Wow. But it was, I, I think, it, a lot of people have said it was better than Nebworth. Really? Because Nebworth was so fucking huge Aye. that it was never going to match up to uh, the expectations of it all. Uh-huh. But Lachlan was just incredible. But it was the, the build up to it because it was like a mini festival. So, like, uh, the day I was there, there was cast, ocean colour scene. The Mannix, Black Grape. It was just like a proper day of just... Aye. It was a fucking... And what amazing. were Oasis like? Because that's one of my regrets. Like, cause I, like, I remember when I was in school and people are still going to see them, they're still together, and I never went because you're kind of like, ah, I'll see them at some point. At some point. And I wish I'd seen them now. They were good. That was that was when they were at their height. Like Aye, That was when they were, they were still getting on enough to do a good show. Right. And the songs at that time were... Because that was when stuff like... When they would play... I mean, like, like some they'd be wonder- playing B sides and shit, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, because, yeah, because like acquiesce and stuff yeah, like that was yeah. going. Which is one of my favourites. Yeah, they would, like it would go down an absolute storm. But that was what was amazing about it. Everyone knew the B sides as well. They did two off Be Here Now, and they did, uh, My Big Mouth and It's Getting Better, Man. Oh really? And they were like brand new songs. Aye. Uh, but the rest of it was just was this definitely fucking... maybe in Morning Glory. It was fucking amazing, man. That'd be class. You seen No. No, oh, I've, oh, seen, oh. I've seen the high flying birds. All oh, right, I have seen. In fact, I saw them at Latitude, which is yeah. the first I've done, which was lucky because I was only doing five as part of a compilation. I got like a full weekend <laughs> out, fucking class. I have seen <laughs> No at Edinburgh Castle, and it's like I don't know if it's like this at all the gigs there, but basically there's like a wee pub, kind of at the top, but before they let you into the wee stadium, but and you weren't allowed to take drink into the stadium, and so so. Everybody was fucking raging, basically. It's There's like Qatar. Someone must... <laughs> someone must have... <laughs> Edinburgh Castle and Qatar, probably a similar amount of fucking murders. <laughs> but um, but uh, some, Liam must have got one day, so he's like tweeting during the gig, like, fucking can't even get a drink at the show. Like, <laughs> you know? It was funny, though, because like, see, back then, like, because uh, obviously it depended on probably mostly Liam, like, what sort of state he turned up in. But... Aye. What kind of performance you would get? Because there's that mad story of like, I, my dad like always had that familiar to millions uh, mm-hmm. CD. Like there was the live one mm-hmm. when they done Wembley, but they done two nights at Wembley, and that was the first night. And it's an I think it's their best live CD or live recording. And then the next night they done it was live on Sky One. 
Yeah. But that it's night, a shambles. Liam right? had went out and get fucking pissed. And <laughs> he was absolutely, and I think he'd just split up with Patsy Kenza yeah. or something like that. That's where he's like ranting about all the stuff she's taken away from him. <laughs> like, he just keeps. It's on YouTube, but it's like if you watch it, he's, he's yeah. literally just in between songs, like during the songs, yeah. he's like, I go, I fucking take the kids. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Turn the wings again. again. <laughs> 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 and it's like a fucking shambles and it's like just such a it's such an interesting contrast of like mm. just if you just went on the other night it'd have been one of the best ones ever and then the second night was fucking probably one of the worst performances of anything ever yeah. must be nice for you as well seeing that and emulating that and then like now you're the one that's drunkenly fucking shambling on the stage that. <laughs> that's what I've tried to do yeah, like it's, it's like uh, I bet you Liam felt pretty invincible yeah, when yeah, was yeah. that's my that's my that's my aim just to fall out with everybody and then die like a member of Fleetwood Mac <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I, I was really into Oasis like when I was at school so I saw them a couple of times around that same time oh, which is great but I know that feeling because uh, you know you're like I'll get them next time they're always on tour I really wanted to see the fall one night I was like oh fuck it I'm doing something else Marky e. Smith lead singer of the fall fucking died the next day yeah <laughs> seriously literally the next day they played Jesus Glasgow Christ. he was like in a wheelchair on stage he was like fucked Jesus Christ so I won't say them he's fucking dead I, I was... didn't even know he was dead actually I don't even know who the cunt is <laughs> no. you don't need to worry I about only know about him because it's Julie how the fuck do you not like I don't know. Right, so you don't things. know films or music. <laughs> I'm, I was never I, a big. Who the fuck do I like you? Like <laughs> genuinely. I was never a big and Oasis. I liked them, but I wasn't the pure. I'm I'm an Arctic Monkeys boy. Come uh, on. I was yeah. the generation after Oasis. I think because I don't. I couldn't even really name you most of it's a few of their songs. I don't really. Know. I, don't I just assumed so. all British people came with like Oasis tunes pre-downloaded. Like. Yeah, it was just on all the time growing up. I know, you know the I mean? big ones. It was huge. I mean, it, like it, folk don't realise how because I was, I was the perfect age for it. Like I was, yeah. I was thirteen when, definitely maybe came out. What year was that? Ninety four. So I would so, have been three. Aye, you know. oh, it would have been weird if you'd been <laughs> well into them like was it the uh, second kettle? <laughs> <laughs> Have you done the Spotify Unwrapped thing this? Year? I saw yours actually. Yeah. Fucking seventy seven thousand. I was uh, listening <laughs> no, or something like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like to be alone. With That's thoughts, insane. You know? Going out drinking alone in Manchester. You know? the problems at home. You know. <laughs> I'm gonna have a check then. Now actually, it will just Do be it live, live on the. Pod. It'll literally just be the car. I What's think. yours, Matt? Just Oasis. No, Blur were my top really? band this year. Which the first, you can bleep that the fir- for the the first year. <laughs> But then it was, I mean, it was Blur Oasis, if Metallica, Arctic Monkeys. You know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you go to become everything you hated. Because <laughs> this is the first year, because normally mine gets sabotaged, whatever the kids are listening to in right. the car. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is the first year that I've managed to, basically because I've pushed all my music onto them. Nice. So uh, so they're now asking for that kind of shit. It's the, the car, basically, is my number one. Which is like the latest album that I've listened yeah, to. The one band you've ever listened to. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like that and Frank Ocean, basically. Aye. That I listen to. Here's the thing, Mark. Do you think Oasis will ever get back together? No. It's not going to happen, is it? No chance. If it does, like, see the amount of money that it was costing to see Blur mm-hmm. when they've got back together, Oasis oh. would be insane. And I would pay it. Like, I would. 100%. I would pay any money. I would love it. Because it would be like the last night out I'd ever have. <laughs> like the fucking end, end of platoon just like dying on my knees with two flares in my hand I feel like when England got to the Euros final <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> flare up the arse <laughs> what would you go for then Oasis over Blur I, I normally but I don't know why I've listened to so much Blur this year uh-huh. it's properly surprised me You've yeah Gorillaz fan I'd like Gorillaz a lot. I, yeah. I've seen Gorillaz live a couple of times. Really What's that like? Is that it's really good, good actually? It's just a screen or what? what? No, they do. Like, they do stuff live, but I mean, there is a lot of visuals. Right. So I think originally, the I don't know if you actually saw them right back in the day, and it was was just like the big screens of the cartoons, right? But I think you see them now. Don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a proper it's like audio visual kind of thing, and on the eye. I seen a video of um, Gorillaz playing in like Brazil or something like that, and Damon Albarn was like. I won't show you the picture. He's wearing like fucking. He's wearing like a pink Stone Island jumper or something, and like pink shorts and like a pink hat, and he looks like a fucking sketch character. It looks like you know you, your fucking dad's last night. Out <laughs> like, like, he's really cool, and he normally looks fucking great, and you know amazing musician, but bad, 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 <laughs> really bad. I quite like the sound of that. Good you rock should have worn that fucking download. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wore my wee festival hat at download and immediately they were like, this cunt, get festival, this. Huh? A wee bucket? Uh, a wee bucket. Oh, no, so. not You've missed it. Have you never heard of download festival? Oh, no. And the thing, I, I got the plane down because it was like the cheapest option or whatever. Got Went on stage and then just got a plane back up. So I never stayed for the weekend or anything like that. I was fucking covered in <laughs> mud on a plane. Fucking Kevin Hart or something. <laughs> Private jet. <laughs> yeah. And I like, probably lost like 20 quid after it because yeah. of the flights and shit. I just wanted to play a festival. just wanted to say that. But like on the plane, like, literally just covered in mud and fucking shoes. I thought they weren't going to let me on because I was like <laughs> caked, in, caked in mud. Eh? Horrible. I've never seen a muddy person on a plane. I know before. it's weird. I, I thought strange because I didn't have any baggage with me or anything because mm. I was down for one day. So I was just a mad muddy cunt. I suspect. I'm yeah. Surprised you didn't get asked them for a few questions. I know. Same. Fuck's sake. But then I just get got his benefits because I had my a whole row in my cell on the plane. Everyone's <laughs> moving away from me and stuff. <laughs> you you obviously do a lot of traveling down south, Mark, and stuff. Because mm. like you you're probably one like you, obviously you're like one of the most like well respected comics in the entire country like UK, I love the say. dynamic of this where you like steer it back, back towards yeah. a question yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> try to talk Steve, about downloading Steve is covered in mud okay but what we're trying to get is um, but no you do uh, obviously you're yeah. down south a lot and stuff like that because like not every Scottish comic decides to, to go down and actually even when you date it's hard sometimes to get into the clubs and that but you you play like comedy store you're playing all over the country yeah how do you how do you find that and like did you have you always done that or was there a period of time um, where I've always made sure I do it like I think you're like all of you guys have done it a lot more than the folk I started with because uh-huh. there was one point like I was one of the only people that was kind of travelling about because yeah. it's hard I mean it's it, Absolutely. It, it's grim a yeah. lot of the time and it's very hard to do it and make yourself do it it's particularly when you're not getting paid for it Aye. but it is very necessary Absolutely. and uh, I quite like the fact that you are all Traveling quite a lot. I well, stops you getting too parochial, or whatever, you know. Yeah, I, I, like this is the worst thing, man. That, that I mean, you there's there's acts that will never ever gig outside the central belt, and when you do even gig with them inside the central belt, it's just it's fucking painful watching it because <laughs> yeah. you're just kind of going, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. There's only so much you can say about stuff that's going on about here yeah uh, even when like people are like going from glasgow to edinburgh they, i've been around people going oh i don't know if this edinburgh audience so like my glasgow fucking, material it's insane <laughs> isn't it i know i know i know imagine being like imagine being like oh crazy unless i unless i do a gig in Kilmarnock, <laughs> this won't work like, <laughs> that's new life to grow up and get a grip of yourself for fuck's sake like, but did you did like because i always find it like Mainly, maybe with the accents, but like it does make you realize about your references, and sometimes you need to expand your horizons. It's probably when we started at doing comedy, like I'd not really even left Glasgow a lot, so like even just getting Aye. about, and sometimes I'm in like Cardiff or something, I'm like, ah, I'm probably like one of the only people I know of the school that's even ever been here. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm <laughs> go here, I don't join, like, but it's cool to get around and you see other. Aye, I love, I love this, and, and you start to get favorite cities. Aye, like that you got a Cardiff, I love, and I love Dublin. Um, and then there's some cities that you like. I hate Leeds. <laughs> I hate Leeds. Let's start some somebody. beef with the city of Leeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, What's your beef with Leeds, man? I've just never done well in Leeds. Aye, you know. <laughs> it's always dependent on how the show's going to it. Yeah, it's like, like this 100 people in some room once, and you're like, ah, forever. Fuck Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate Leeds. <laughs> It depends. Oh, you're but... a bunch of wankers. Because <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Is that quite a big stag do place, Leeds? I think, it... I think it was because I was doing the jonglers kind of stuff when yeah. I first started going down there. So it was, they were tough, tough, tough rooms. Yeah. He's got bogey towns. Dumfries was one for me. Was it? Just, I fucking hate Dumfries, man. I just had three shit ones in Dumfries. Oh, I'm yeah. never fucking going back. <laughs> <laughs> Dumfries is weird, though. Dumfries can be really weird, like, in terms of. I've never really enjoyed doing Dumfries. I'm from there. Like it's, <laughs> it's a weird place, man. What? Like what is? I don't know anything. About I don't really know about it at all. It's quite. I mean, it's quite a big town, but it's just not been. There's been no money put into it for decades and decades. So it's just run. I find it quite depressing going back there. Man. Yeah. Even my mum and dad still live there, and when I go back down, uh, me and my pals will go back down at Christmas and stuff, and it's quite depressing because a lot of the pubs that used to be there are no longer there. There's no high street anymore. It's just. It's quite a rundown kind of place. Looks sick. Well, because you don't seem to have like a, a 
Dumfries accent. What's a Dumfries accent? I would imagine it would be kind of chuchtery, no? Nah, well, it's a kind of mis- it's, a, it's, a, it's a different chuchtery. Is it? It's like it's not as it's more understandable. Yeah, but it's it's, a, it's like it's almost like a Carlisle kind of accent. Right, it's like and quite used coasty as well for, a, for our English a chuch- <laughs> <laughs> like a what is a chuch- like a sort of Stuart. Well, as we just think everyone who's no football is know, a fucking <laughs> chuch. <laughs> Why? Where are you from? Like uh, Fife, no, Fife. Ah, yeah. oh, that is that is chuch today. Nah. <laughs> it's the odd farm. It's not. <laughs> yeah, like farmland. Yeah. Yeah. What is Rural. the definition of a chuch? Just apparently you kind of. Shouldn't be saying chukter anymore. Is that discriminatory term? <laughs> Fucking woke police after that. Right? <laughs> it's not high on the agenda, is it? Chukter. <laughs> I'm just. Uh, hey, no, you you got to call them rurally it. challenged. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine That's... a politician lost their job because they tweeted ten years ago saying they were chukter. <laughs> <laughs> Go I back through all your old tweets, deleting all the chukter ones. Because I would say to me, it's like your your Fife, your Dundee, your Aberdeen, mm. probably anywhere in the Highlands. But anywhere but Glasgow, that is you, literally everywhere but Glasgow. <laughs> but if you hear somebody going, "Hey, you can't eh, like for fucking Edinburgh," I would say that's a chukter accent. So I do think for Glaswegians, it basically means end that it's no. In the same way that they all call us Ouija's, even though you never hear anyone use that phrase in Glasgow, obviously. Mm. You no, know? uh, and technically we're not even from Glasgow, we're Western Bartonshire. So. Do- don't dox us, bro. <laughs> we're not anywhere. But, uh, east, I've moved to the East. Yeah, Eastern Bartonshire. Moving up in the world, guys. You know how if you're ever in like, a, if you're at a do or something, and like I've heard, I think Chris Rock said this, or Seinfeld or someone, like if you're in like a big do, uh-huh. and you like gravitate towards another comedian, you're like, comedian, thank uh-huh. God, like, yeah. you know, we get it kind of thing. That was me last night at Tenants with two lads for Fife, uh, <laughs> Stevie Mill, and we're chatting like, nobody else fucking gets it, man, they'll call us chukters, and we're like, we understand, you know, like, always find each other. <laughs> Talk about Rafe Rovers and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it, we literally were. <laughs> like, my, my bogey place is Aberdeen. Hate it. Hate getting in Aberdeen, man. It's a bunch of fucking chukters. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Steve never leaves Glasgow. Yeah. I uh, just I don't like just like Aberdeen. I won't hear a bad word said against Aberdeen. Really? I mean, Martin's just sold no. it two shows, there, no. haven't you? Yeah. Oh, my, fuck. My, 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 my people. <laughs> Please like, granite, Mark. Do you like Aberdeen? I I had my first night out in Aberdeen last two weekends ago, my birthday. How uh, is that? It was alright. It's quite a mental place. Is like it? it's like, yeah, there's it's a, a full of mad oil. I like a and stuff? proper a fight broke out in the pub. A bit Me and my pals in were in. But it was like a proper Wild West fight where it had started up on a level above us <laughs> and then spilled down a set of stairs. Like, oh, it was incredible, man. <laughs> and there's folk getting involved that weren't ever involved in the first place. And there's a point where you go, I should get involved. Like, I'll fucking... <laughs> I'll, swing, I'll swing a foot in. Because like, you know? <laughs> sometimes we have to know that you got up and you kind of go like that. What? What do cunts go up to here? <laughs> yeah. You're like, what? What? All the same stuff. He's doing? I like, cause, and I feel like Aberdeen, because it's like, no, it's almost kind of secluded a wee bit. It's kind of festers in its own thing and becomes its own wee ecosystem up there. And then you've got, as I say, it's like all of the oil riggers. It's just a weird dynamic that's there. I don't yeah. know, it's interesting. But hey. I've got a show on Aberdeen coming out soon, so <laughs> buy tickets, maybe. But My so Aberdeen show's been and gone, fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the worst place you've gigged? I assume somewhere down south. Ever? Uh, where, where'd you like? Isle of Man. Oh, really? It's grim. What the fuck's that I like? suppose you can't leave the Aye. island, yeah. can you? Really if you die in your arse. Di- it was nice. It was a good laugh, but... Aye, there's a weird kind of atmosphere about the whole place. Mm. Is that where David Icke lives? <laughs> I don't know. Is, that, is he lives in... And well, I think Ireland, Isla White, Isla White, Isla White, Isla White. But he's a, it's mean. a tax haven as well. Really? That I forgot about. So there's quite a lot of rich folk there. It's where, oh, like, uh, see all the illegal gambling sites and like, poker Aye. stars and all that. They're all based there. All mm. no, right. So it's like this normal place, but then there's these folk are up so they don't driving like about in massive cars and just. Aye. So they don't like the anti-Tory stuff, basically. <laughs> they don't know. They definitely <laughs> <say, laughs> do not. Michelle Moon's got a house there. I found that out the other day. Aye. Is that like Britain's Monaco, basically? That well, aye. I mean, it's kind technically, of shy, aye. But it's... as well, I suppose, is kind of like that. Never been to any of those wee islands. No, I mean, 
We went to the Isle of Cole, that's only that's the furthest <laughs> I failed. <laughs> you tell me this every episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only reference I've got. <laughs> what was wrong with the guy? Just just a weird uh, there was a lot of coked up folk there. Um never and, helps, uh, does it? it was just, it was just they they uh, they done a thing where you could get like a VIP the VIP seats. And it was, it was like a fucking village hall or something. And the VIP seats were on a bench at the front and you got a bottle of Prosecco and that was it. That's fuck. Does that sort of shit, doesn't he? No. <laughs> Don't want to put him out there. We can bleep the name, but he does that, doesn't he? Aye. We've actually used the bleep. I've never used it until the last two episodes. <laughs> it's become a fucking yeah, feature. Yeah. But he'll put like uh, chair covers on the seats and give them a bottle of Prosecco and go, these are VIP. Fuck off. <laughs> no, 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 no. you feel? <laughs> and down the front as well. That's probably uh, not where you want to be. I know exactly. Uh, yeah. Do you have to? Do you have to bleep out folk? Because I imagine now that you're starting to date more. Names yeah, I'm will, starting to worry. Names will be mentioned. In the <laughs> I don't mind slagging. Well, we bleeped, we bleeped out the name of someone and then Farrelly spent ten minutes talking about how he was getting a fight with Tom Stace. <laughs> <laughs> Did you cut that? Out? Just left that in. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Bleeped out. I had dogs to you last week. Yeah, so yeah, I had lives, to bleep yeah. that as well. Yeah. It's basically been that. We need to bleep out every reference to the word chukter as well. <laughs> we <know what's> <laughs> During the pandemic, you were hosting the stand live shows, like so it was like obviously an empty com. It was for a bit. It was in a like, house or something, wasn't it? And it was in yeah, it was in a flat called. in Edinburgh, aye. and you're just staring yeah. at the camera doing jokes. Yeah. And it was a, uh, and then obviously they'd done it in the standing, and they brought like other comics in and stuff like that as well. But like that was like it wasn't an easy gig, even just to do a spot like hosting it must have. And you were doing like new material at the yeah, top of yeah, 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 week yeah, and stuff. Yeah. How did you find it? It's the, it's the best thing I've ever done. Like Aye. I didn't realise it at the time, but it's the most enjoyable I've ever found comedy. Really? Genuinely, no, I was no, no, so. well, why? <laughs> like, they hold you back. It's like Tom and Daniel's <laughs> yeah. joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it properly freed you up to do. By the end of it, I was like writing stuff that I would never have normally tried out uh, because it didn't really, not that it didn't really matter, but there was no instant feedback. Aye. So you've got the freedom. eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was amazing. Like it properly kept me sane being able to write 15 new minutes every single week. Yeah. And you realise after a while what you're good at in terms of comedy. And that that was just the kind of thing I found myself I was really comfortable doing, like writing breaking down the barrel. Of yeah, balance. writing new topical stuff every week. I, it was like I kind of treated it like well, I, I'd, I've always would have loved to have hosted like a Letterman type yeah. thing. So that like it felt like that doing like being able to do look. that every single yeah. week, mm-hmm. which yeah. was class. And you've presented telly and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. But not like that. I mean, that would be the absolute ultimate. Yeah. Do a kind of daily show type Oh, I of fucking thing, love to do that, man. That would be absolutely. That's that's the pinnacle yeah. of it's weird comedy that, that we don't have that sort of thing in Britain. Well, it was the Mash Report, I suppose. Aye. they've tried it. They tried, it. they tried it. They tried it with John and Ross. They tried like a late show kind of thing, and John Bishop tried one as well. It right. doesn't really work in this country because there's not enough. There's not enough big celebrities. The reason the when they did the Comedy Central roasts in Britain. It didn't work because no one knew who when, the I, were. when they're doing it, they're doing like William Shatner and yeah. Shaquille O'Neal and stuff, and then it was like fucking, fucking Ryland or something. Aye, yeah. Barbara Windsor and stuff. And yeah. like, there's only so many jokes you can make, and it's like yeah. there's not enough. Bi- there's not big enough stars, and there's not enough with something like Letterman or Leno or Jimmy Fallon and stuff. Every single night, it's like a top Hollywood actor. Yeah. Or a top TV star, or a top band, or something like that. Huge, huge, huge. Yeah, and here you just run out. Yeah, and there's no the writers either. Yeah, that's, that's a, a big thing. That's like, like, because I read that book. It's called um, "Poking the Frog" or something. That's all about comedy writing. And basically, so many people in comedy in America get started out by being a yeah, staff writer, a writer on or a letterman or something. It's just not a culture that, and yeah. we just don't have that here. It's because of the money, though. It's like, yeah, you it's... know, like you see these big American sitcoms. There'll be like fifteen people in the writers room, whereas here it's always just one or two people. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just money. It's just budget. yeah. There's not there's not it's the money to do. It's why Saturday Night Live. Couldn't I mean they could they tried it and they're, they're going to try it again? But what here? Aye. Oh really? But but they tried it again. They did Friday Night Live, the Ben Elton thing. That's right. Week, so. Yeah. But it can't last because the TV companies aren't willing to pay the money to. I know because I actually thought because I watched that Friday Night Live and it came back and I thought they were bringing it back as an actual series and then I'm like, 
He's talking about Thatcher a lot still. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It was all like kind of calling back yeah. to the old days there. And I was like, all right, like, aye. And then just, they, they just go, it's almost like kind of they go, mind when we used to do stuff. Yeah. You know, it's all like yeah. a nostalgia trip to mm. telly, which yeah. I feel like is sometimes is the case anyway. Like, you know, it's basically just nursing home shit. Uh, people watching for the most part are fucking, you know, on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just to entertain them. So. And that's how, and that's, they know that and they're like, well, we want to gear it towards these old people. So some of the telly's kind of watered down. Uh, yeah. Shite. I shit still don't. The past. I don't. Is this like... a plug for the show we're in on Hogmanay? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very funny, actually. Yeah. Thanks. Fresh. I'll be fresh. All fresh ideas. <laughs> <laughs> you do write a lot of topical stuff and you talk about politics and stuff in your act. And like, do you find it's it's harder now? Because it is. I I I've been trying to do more topical stuff and all that, but like, you feel it. The sh- the fucking the plates are shifting so much now in terms of. You know, what's happening? Like, even be obviously when Liz Trust was in charge and everything was was going so fast that like fucking you know, you're trying to write about the Chancellor and then there's yeah. a fucking new one and all that sort of stuff. Like, do you find it harder now to do topical stuff than it used to be or it, it, it is harder because social media made it a lot harder. because um, everyone's got a platform. Yeah, to do and stuff. it's like I was reading a thing about the reason panel shows it was it was one mock the week get cancelled. The reason panel shows don't really work in this country anymore is because Half the jokes have already been done on Twitter by the time that comes out because there's only so many angles you can take. On yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the other night when um, uh, the World Cup, where Ronaldo was claiming the Bruno Fernandez goal, and it, I mean it was literally just after the goal had gone in, mm. I'd put a tweet up. The basic joke was, uh, "There's another thing that." Ronaldo, like there's another thing that people are wondering whether Ronaldo touched it or not <laughs> right? and then within five <laughs> 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 bleep there <laughs> I said Ronaldo's watching <laughs> uh, but within five minutes like there was about another four comics had put up the same, same joke thing. and yeah. it's yeah. like it, that's, that's, that's the problem you have yeah I know and that, I guess that's the thing like even sometimes when like you see, let's say, like, Keir Starmer makes a fucking joke at PMQs or something, and it's mm. like, it's probably originally somebody said something like that, but then when they're even, even yeah. the politicians yeah. are like, yeah. doing jokes, you're like, right, well, you need to be a couple of fucking steps yeah. ahead of them. And yeah. There was a joke, uh, so like, the past couple of weeks since the World Cup started, I've been doing a bit about how they can protest against the... Uh, uh, like they they can they can protest and be in solidarity with the LGBTQ, and it was basically like, don't mention it, and then in the last uh, game get the two captains to start wanking each other off, <laughs> and then and it was like a bit I was properly doing it in the clubs, and then my wee brother sent me a clip of Frankie basically doing not the same joke, similar, but it was a yeah. similar joke, and then yeah. you kind of go, well that's fucked now because. That, you know what I mean? That's right just now. one it's the of the things. With topical stuff, and it? yeah, just yeah, the nature of it. Yeah. Aye, absolutely. No, you just need to get that that angle. I know because I say well, I should, been... you could do it, but give a wee peck on each other's ass in the final. That could be, <laughs> be personalised. I've it, been you doing know. my bit for LGBTQ rights <laughs> for you know since I was a wee guy. You ever pecked anyone's ass cheek, Mark? <laughs> Kissed like kissing ass cheek? Uh-huh. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why would you like? It's for a laugh, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ, I, fuck, I totally forgot this. I, I, totally forgot. I, was, I was away there. Oh, hey, that was weird, man. <laughs> people keep bringing it up. Yeah. It's yeah. like our wonder wall. I was saying that to you last yeah. night. Did people mention it at the attendance thing last night? Uh, it's, no, but it what happens up. is occasionally somebody comes and go, oh, I like the podcast, and then they'll be like, what about that kiss and arse thing? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I forget that everyone's seen that. <laughs> You're, uh, I like your, I was going to say I like your uh, jumper. You've got a big obsession with sharks. Yeah. Don't you? Favourite film is Jaws. Yeah. What came first? Uh, Jaws, Jaws came first. And, the, and, that and then the obsession sharks. of sharks. That's what right. got you into sharks. Yeah. A gateway yeah. drug. Mm. Is, it, is it your favourite film? <laughs> ah, well, easily. What is it you easily. like so much about it's, Jaws? It's perfect. It's, there's, there, like, there's generally not a second of that film I would change. It's a perfect, perfect film. <laughs> How long it's is it? It's amazing. How long is it? Uh, it's about two hours long I you think we could cut, we could cut out half an hour aye, aye, easy, yeah. aye. easy do you find it's like a good allegory <laughs> like now, as everybody was posting that meme when Covid was happening and it's like the, is it the mayor like oh the fucking water's fine go in yeah. alright oh, yeah yeah I didn't like that you don't care about that nah. you just love just the nah. film on it's no because I was face. into it before 
COVID. Ah, you know, but I'm, <laughs> I'm trying on because I'm like, I, I've seen it, it's, you know, it's good or whatever. I get it, there's a shark, but we'll try. But it's so much more than the shark. Because the shark doesn't, the it. shark doesn't really, the shark, you don't even fucking see the shark till about an hour and a half, oh, isn't yeah. it? But that, is that the, the appeal? Because it's, it's like. It's a relationship between three men. Oh, um, well, this podcast. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, because my son, uh, my son's middle name is named after one of the characters in Jaws, and my wife didn't realise that shark, until it, like, it, had all been, it had all been signed off. Because <laughs> she was so fucked up after like her giving birth and stuff. I was like, I'll fucking sneak that. In. <laughs> what is what's the middle name? His middle name's Brody. Ah, Brody. Yeah, it's very American, isn't it? Very mirroring, but it's spelt in the Scottish way. Oh, right. That's how I got away with it. Ah. <laughs> What's he, interesting to me about it is obviously people like films and stuff, but you, you're associated with Jaws. You know, people oh. want to talk to you about Jaws, mm. like what we're doing now. Mm. I couldn't name anyone else in my life that's like, oh, that's, that's like, their the film, film there. It's because I go on about it quite a lot. It's <laughs> very much like the 90s thing as well. I have, I have things I love, and then yeah. I just go on about it. Yeah, I tried to get it. I tried to get it going with the term strangle wank for a while. <laughs> I tried to be the strangle wank guy. I tried to call, I tried to call my show at Edinburgh once. You don't want to strangle. They wouldn't let me. Really? They wouldn't let me call it strangle. Even wank. with just bleeping it out. You need yeah. to do the the Larry Dean routine and just make it like too Scottish. So they <laughs> yeah, they yeah, don't yeah, understand yeah, yeah, that yeah. it's swearing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, I mean, well. That'd be a way to go, wouldn't it? If you really want to be remembered as a strangle wank comedian, <laughs> yeah. you need a Michael Hutchins. You know what it takes. There's too many people have gone. Yeah, the guy that was in Kill Bill. Yeah, David Carradine. Yeah, he, he went with that as be, well. Yeah, aye. strangle wank. Do you know the comic Rory Scoville? Yes. Yeah, one of me and Steve's favourites. But I was rewatching his Netflix one. Rory Scoville tries stand up for the first yeah. time. He's got that so bit about it's fucking amazing. If so you're good. G- I'm just butchering a bit here that's on Netflix, but yeah, like if you're gonna kill yourself, you may as well have a go, to, you know, yeah, yeah, or erotic asphyxiation, you know. Oh, Christ, yeah. yeah, yeah, may as well, yeah. It's like, and that could be the thing that stops you from killing yourself because you're like, this is so good, this is so what class. I? <laughs> <laughs> I, want I can't just with. experience this once, <laughs> <laughs> it must be a class. I don't know, I've never tried it, but I, that's the worry, man, like just getting found. It's. Do you know what it is? It's the. That's the worry for me. The embarrassment. The worry for me. It's the. It's even if you're not doing it to kill yourself, right? It's the aftermath, right? Because it's grim enough after you've just had a wank, and you've got to tidy yourself up. Post not clarity. Close the. (laughs) Close the laptop. Pay for parking. Like it's like it's it's grim anyway. But can you imagine having to undo a belt from a hotel room door and fucking, like, Jesus. Yeah, yeah that is good. Yeah. I don't know yeah. how much of this is making edit. <laughs> That's what make it, because you, you used to have a funny joke, actually, that I, I loved. It was about, like, people who are into like, BDSM and stuff. It's like the shame after that. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Taking your, undoing your testes for a fucking car battery. Or yeah, 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 God, yeah, yeah. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 I also don't know how you ever... Because I've got a pal that's into, like, proper tying folk up and stuff like that. And it's always that kind of how you how you broach it. Yeah, what date is it where yeah. you raise that? Aye. Like, do you know beforehand that they're also into the same kind of thing? Or is it a you surprise it on them? And then <laughs> yeah. it's, There'll be an app these days. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's weird. Like, yeah, you'd have to kind of bread just a few bread crumbs ah, yeah. lead, you know, lead up to it take them abseil and see if they <laughs> <laughs> see if they're into it <laughs> have you ever seen a shark mm-hmm. yeah. I swam with sharks you swam with sharks yeah. is that the way you want to go getting killed by a that'd shark that'd be quite good wanked off, that, 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 off by a shark does he have so tight on that <laughs> 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 Where did you swim with sharks? I mean, this, this, uh, when I say swim with sharks, it was in South Queensferry, so it's not. Is it, oh, is it, not, <laughs> is it North, Queen, North Queensferry? That's where the. the, the, you know, the sea life sea Deep Sea World. Uh, yeah. Yeah, what you kind get, of shark was it? Or just a wee It's a. Uh, what was it again? Chukta shark. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you swim in, eh? <laughs> uh, you're only scared they open their mouth in case they fucking start talking. <laughs> <laughs> what type of shark it was but I mean there's no danger at all are they uh, in like a cage or something or? no no you, you, you swim like you're, you've got a uh, wetsuit on and the diving gear and they just swim about you but they're 
they're like doped up to <laughs> like they've been fed about nine times that day so they're right. tired and they're just floating past right and then yeah. so they're just they're just ready enough for you to mount them and <laughs> it does kind of sound like you want to fucking shot. <laughs> I've, I've got a joke actually just now about fucking shot. <laughs> <laughs> Started talking about all you. your political <laughs> stuff during COVID and that. Political guy, Mark. <laughs> and the fucking the shot. Yeah. Guys, <laughs> To me, Matt Hancock's very much like fucking a shark. <laughs> yeah, I used to be quite obsessed with sharks. About one of my favourite films when I was a wee guy, it's, I would arguably better than Jaws was Deep Blue Sea. You ever seen that? Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's class, isn't it? It's a good film, I. Better than Jaws. It's not even nearly better than Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not even di- at the time, ridiculously like. stupid film, but it's, it's fun. Stupid, but it's, it's fun. Funny. It's, it's great. It's fun. I loved it. But when the fucking thing comes out and takes Samuel Jackson's amazing. Amazing. Aye. So good. What was the one with the dolphin? Free Flipper. Willy. Free Willy. I'm a Free Willy guy. That's not a dolphin. <laughs> That's a whale. Yes. Free Willy's a whale. What? Free Willy's Flipper. a killer whale. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> one of the a killer things. whale. Aye. Aye. Is it? An yeah. orca? No? Is that? Yeah, that's mm. uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where'd you stand on Sharknado? I quite like it. I think it's alright. Uh, I quite like a lot of those weird shark Daft movies. things. Yeah. Like the Santa Claus. There's a, there's, a, there's a Christmas one as well. <laughs> where it's just a shark that comes it's from Santa. the North Pole. And he's Santa. He's got a Santa hat on his, <laughs> on his fin. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wonder what that meeting's like, don't you, in Hollywood? Like, here's a fucking idea. A like, guy that's just literally doing cocaine. I know, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. What yeah. you think about that? That is, that, that, like, see when folk go, it's incredibly difficult to get a film made. It's then, not. <laughs> then I mean, it's stuff. really fucking not. You can make anything. I mean, you see what gets made, you're like, what the fuck didn't they get made? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Christmas like, Sharknado, man. It's very much like BBC Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, um, was it Dirty Dancing? The script was found in a skip. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I I was watching a mad documentary about it. The script, was, someone was going through all these scripts that had been chucked out from some production company. And they were like, this is actually no bad. We should we should make this. I, I don't, I'm, I'm thinking that's maybe Sharknado as well or or something. Oh no, I think they were all in. Do you think straight away? I don't think I. <laughs> that doesn't need a second pass. I remember seeing Dirty Dancing because Dirty Dancing came on TV because that, that was when like when things were premiered on TV. That was like the first time most people had seen them, right. and I was a wee guy, and at school and Dirty Dancing. When you're a wee guy and you see it, you're just like oh, Jesus Christ! This is, <laughs> this, is the, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. I remember that in Top Gun. I remember talking to my pals the next day at Top Gun because there's like a silhouette scene where they both get off each other and you can see the thumbs right. touching. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've done that for the done pod. Both on the pod. Dirty Dancing was all right. It's quite dark, darker than... Dirty Dancing, that's a really dark, dark film, yeah. aye. Have you seen it, Mark? No. Illegal seen. abortions. Yeah. Yeah. Really? yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be a daft movie about yeah. dancing. And, pretty... and it wasn't as dirty as I wanted it to be. <laughs> Nah. No, I thought it would be some more strangle wanks on it. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some dirty dancing right there. <laughs> Nobody strangle wanks baby in the corner. Wow. <laughs> that joke that I was talking about for your uh, BDSM thing, I think I, the, the time that I remember that hearing that was at the dram. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it was the time that, that the master time, the master. Oh right. yeah, uh, you coined Steve's, Steve's origin story. That was amazing. That so good. <laughs> I don't it wasn't know, even, it's not even me. Yeah, it was a new material night at the Dram. Basically, if you don't know, I get called the master within Scottish comedy. Mm. Ironically, though, you've introduced master me on and stage. commander. <laughs> uh, it's it's funny, but always it's always like I think the audience <laughs> are expecting some fuck it like Tom Stead to yeah, walk on or yeah. something. I'd hate to be called. It that. is very funny. Because uh, that's because I, I latched onto it immediately after that night and just started calling you online all the time. <laughs> uh, so how did it how did it come about again? So it was a new material night and um, I was doing like ten minutes or whatever new material and you were headlining mm. and uh, the host was trying to big up the to get the audience going for me coming on stage uh-huh. and he just 
accidentally. You could see it and he's like, he was just running out of things to say. He was like, you're going to love this guy. He's absolutely amazing. <laughs> he's the master of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and then like, you could see his face going, why did I say that? But he just continued it. He's like, welcome, Stephen Buchanan. And I was like, it's me, it's the master of comedy, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then you went on and headlined it and you're like, you started going like, oh, it's such a... <laughs> such a an honour. An honour to be <laughs> on after the master of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> In many ways, you were the apprentice to my, <laughs> to my master. How right. did he bring you on out of interest? Uh, I think he just basically did, like it was like, right, here's your last act. <laughs> <laughs> I think I introduced his headline and I just got last act. You can't really top master, <laughs> yeah. can you? <laughs> I yeah. just got a flashback to somebody calling me Stephen Buchanan in the pub last night. Fuck's he was like trying to show off to these people, and he's like, "Oh, the great and the good of comedy hits." And here's Stephen Buchanan. <laughs> did I not like, do that to you on TV once? Remember oh, that? Probably. I think I did. I. It happens. Aye. What was it on? Uh, on that thing bad I did. Influence aye. aye. Oh, I think I see. Yeah, probably. Aye. Well, on that bad influence, I'll show you also. I think I was in Australia when this happened, but like you've got. Uh, Judith Ralston, the weather yes. BBC weather woman, he sent my dad a message because yeah. I tweeted oh, that yeah. thing about him having to sleep on the couch because he'd googled her. <laughs> <laughs> that was very, very funny, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Aye, that was a good laugh. It was funny, like just sending that into my family group chat. It's like, <laughs> hello, Ian, I've got a message for you. <laughs> I was mental. Remember like, that time? I don't know, you've probably talked about this, but your dad was like a proper viral sensation. Aye, right? aye. Yeah. Because yeah. he was sitting at the back garden uh, when there was snow. Such a great Because <laughs> honestly, because what happened, I was actually about to go that day and uh, and I was like, just getting ready and then I'm like, is he fucking sitting at the back? And then I was like, just thinking to myself, I'm, like, ah, I'm pretty sure there's still snow out there. And I looked at the window and I was and I'm like, ah, that is fucking funny. Like, yeah, such a dad thing to do. I seen my wee cousin the other day and he was actually saying, because my dad's brother lives in England and he was working and like, these the guys he's working with like oh look at this guy's like pure classic Scottish and then like he looked at me like that's my fucking brother <laughs> 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 you just must assume that we all just know each other <laughs> you hosted the good you hosted the good the bad and unexpected on yeah. Radio Scotland and you said a TV pilot as well yeah would you like to do something like that like host a kind of like front a kind of like like either a panel show or maybe a news thing or something um like I I mean. I don't know. Uh, I think I think a topical thing would be the ideal. Aye, but it's like it's you, you'll know yourselves. Like it's TV is very very hard to get anything on now. That t- it takes it takes ages and ages because yeah. like you've got like Scott Squad's finishing. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. which seems mad to me because it's people watch it. People yeah. watch it. It's yeah. still popular. It's, it's not like it's a kind of sketch show, so you can, aye, can so continue. The, the, like the, cheap. The, the I but Cheap. the I the ideas are endless yeah, almost yeah. so it seems like a no brainer just to keep it yeah, yeah. Going. I guess it's good to have something fresh, it up, fresh yeah. come in I don't know. we could have your fucking shark porn <laughs> <laughs> the mix if you want to pitch that shark wank <laughs> man arrested for shagging a fucking shark <laughs> this week I'm gonna get wanked off by a tiger shark <laughs> in South Queens very there's trouble off it so there's a guy that I love things on uh, th- see how you get like the algorithms on like the vi- Facebook videos or TikTok or something like that it uh, learns what you mm-hmm. what you like Uh so it keeps throwing up so there's a guy that gets stung by different insects every video and then has to see how long he can take the pain before they <laughs> administer the the but, antidote but like venomous it's fucking incredible he's like there's like hornets or snakes fuck's so sake he'll be like, you know, oh, go on. Right, here we go here we go and then he'll just let it bite him and then he'll roll about in fucking agony like tensing up Jesus the camera Christ. guy's just watching it it's fascinating what the fuck that's what you're into. No, 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 that 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 and snooker trick shots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna watch the snooker tomorrow. Are you? Yeah, it's got a show, baby. You, if it wasn't for Stuart, I wouldn't even know that they still show snooker on the telly. Like it's just because I always see you talking about it. I like to feel like my granddad just nodding off watching the snooker. Yeah, it's great, man. I get caught uh, when this, there was a snooker. It was on at the SEC. It was when it was still the SECC. And me and my pal went along and I'd phoned in sick for work. <laughs> and we'd gone to see, there was like, I can't even remember who was playing the other, on one of the tables, but on the other table, Steve Davis was playing. And we were like desperate to see Steve Davis. And we were one of the only people in the crowd. 
and BBC Two showed that and showed me and my pal. <laughs> no one's And then a guy fucking saw me from the work. You were a t-shirt that says <laughs> Snooker <laughs> Loopy on. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that literally, you literally had that thing happen of like getting seen yeah. on the telly. For fuck's sake, man. That's At least if you're at the football or something, it's like a huge crowd shot. Ah, it could yeah. be anybody, Snooker, but aye, no, no, no. This is probably never going to come up again, but see, just because you're talking about Steve Davis, and obviously the Rangers player Steve Davis as well, right? And I remember being on a bus once, it was that it was when Rangers were playing in the UEFA Cup final the fucking first time in Manchester one. It was like the lead up to that, and I was on a bus, and it was these two people going like that. I Steve da, Steve Davies, and the other guys like it's no Davies, it's Davis, and he's like no, it's Davies, he's foreign, isn't he? And he's like no, he's from Northern Ireland. I was like I was foreign, and I was like I think probably quite a lot of Rangers fans would take a bridge. But I've just ever since I've just always called him Steve Davies. Steve Davies. <laughs> what was it? Because going back to that thing getting caught there, what was the mad story? Mind you, were saying about the mad guy who got like it was was it on curb or something like that? No, and, there's a there's a thing I think it was on Netflix or something. It's like a documentary about. So they filmed an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm oh, at yeah. like a fucking baseball game or whatever it was, or, and uh, and then there's a guy that got accused park. of murder. I think he was in jail and all that, and then they proved that he didn't do the murder because he was at that game. And they got some of the footage from Cubby Enthusiasm Jesus. and it, it got him off. That's how OJ got off. Showed some naked gun footage <laughs> like, <laughs> in there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, we'll talk about news now. I mean, obviously, you have had some, some viral success with, with the news at three. Mm. Which is like your your Wayne? I can't remember which one. Sorry, Mark. What, 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 was your <laughs> girl? Was girl? <laughs> <laughs> she was fully booked today. We couldn't get her. Because so. because you would just ask her opinions on the news, and she'd give these cute answers and stuff. Aye, like it was yeah, it was a thing that I'd, it started by um, when she was when she was about one. Uh-huh. She had these uh, magnetic letters. Well, magnetic. You could stick them to the tiles. When she was mm. taking a bath, so I put up one one day that said "Death to the West." <laughs> <laughs> and then I put like I think my daughter's been radicalised, and then <laughs> and it, it did quite well. And then I started putting up different things. It was when it was when Trump was running for president as oh, well, yeah. so I started putting up pro-Trump stuff. And then, <laughs> <laughs> Build the wall. Someone, someone at the BBC kind of said she was like, "Could you do anything with that?" And I was like, "I don't really." So, I went away and thought about it and then it ended up writing stuff where it would be me and her talking about the news. Mm -hmm. But the idea was that I was the stupid one that didn't really understand and she was the one that was insightful and knew everything about it. Oh, this has been exciting, eh? Yeah. It's like Game of Thrones. What do you think of our new Prime Minister then? Oh, she's a different woman. You know, people at my nursery will all be better. Well, sorry. Looks like you're stuck with her. You had this call with my plate, then. I don't think that's going to happen. You had no mandate. Well, she's already named her cabinet. Has she? What happened to her mum looks like Greedo? Michael Gove. She sacked him. <laughs> Boris has been made foreign secretary, though. It must be a joke. Afraid not. <laughs> and it just grew for there, and then we ended up doing, like... Ended up going on for the news to doing stuff about... Like seasonal ones, like we did a Valentine's Day one and an Easter one and summer mm. holidays and all that kind of stuff. And then folks seem to like it. So yeah. it was And does she understand like what like the amount of people that have seen it and like what that or means? Yeah, or... um she kinda of, like I always like once she went to school we stopped it because I didn't want it oh, yeah. to uh, impact any of that. Um and but I think she kinda of does. And like jingle like, like the other. But she looks so different now that it's uh, like, yeah, you wouldn't be able. To but it was tell. weird at the time, and it was really, really weird because the Easter one went mental. Uh, like it was fucking like two hundred fifty million views and oh stuff. Really, like that. and like it was enormous. Like Ashton Kutcher put up on his, <laughs> his Twitter page, and like, uh, but she would get recognised in the. When wow. I would take her out to the park, and I must have been quite folk an asking, check for you. Five, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. Folk asking to get a selfie with her, and it was like it was really fucking mm, weird. Yeah, and that, that's strange. that's when I started to go. Uh, yeah, that let's, would let's, be. Let's, let's stop this now because yeah. it's yeah. kind of getting out of control now. But but it was because it, it was like because you'd think like that kind of that kind of amount. I mean, if you got that, see if you got that for a stand up clip, Aye. that would be you absolutely. Made, you'd be like, 
Paul Smith head, like, headline arenas and stuff. Yeah. But because it was nothing to do with, like, they, I would get people follow me and then they'd go and watch stuff in my stand up and go, <laughs> Oh, he's not like that. So, <laughs> and then, so you just lose it immediately. So it's it a lot more really... about fucking sharks. Than yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> When's that episode? <laughs> so, is your son in a TV show now? Is that? Right? He's, yeah. Oh. This sounds te- This sounds like I'm a proper prick of a dad that <laughs> no. just fucking sends his wings out. To... But yeah, one of these showbiz moms yeah, in, in America. He's in a CBB show. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So do you have to kind of? Like go along and chaperone and stuff. It's all done. It's all done. It was done it? within like four weeks and stuff like that. He's got like a, a part in a TV show that's that's finished now. Right. But that was that was purely through a wee drama class he goes to on a Saturday, and oh, he right. just he just fit the description Brilliant. of the wee guy that's <laughs> in it. Like he, he's he's the wee brother of one of the characters, and he looks like the wee guy that's his big brother. So that's, it was that's great. But it was class. Ah, it's great fun. That's brilliant. It doesn't pay as much as you think it would. Uh, like yeah, when no. he first got it, I was at. I was like t- retirement. Fucking, yeah, I was like the, the Williams sisters' dad. <laughs> going, yes, this is, you nah. might end up like it's no Tom Holland's dad's that is Dominic Holland. Is yeah, stand-up, yeah. Eh? You could end up with that fucking new yeah. Spider Man. I could, I. But he doesn't it. give a shit about it, my son. Like he doesn't. Yeah. He's got no interest in doing it at all. It was just proper water off a duck's back for him. Yeah. Like he was just like that. But that would probably enough. be good for a performance point of view, like not being nervous or scared. Yeah, I mean, we didn't tell him that was what it was for, like at any point, because like when we went up from we went went for like you had to go for auditions and stuff. So we just told him oh, it was it's part of your drama thing, it's just right. But there was wee kids there that had been prepped to fuck, and right. you could, they were terrified, like they were yeah. proper, yeah. like weird, weird wings. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do your kids, like, know what you do? Like, do they understand what oh, stand-up is and they, they watch your stuff? You know, no, no, no. They've asked. <laughs> they've, asked. They've, 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 uh, when I've been, I did Belladrum Music Festival and that's quite a big kids festival and there's a comedy tent there and they kind of sneaked in at one point. Oh, aye. But, eh, uh, I they understand aye. what stand up is because it must be a mad thing to see your parent on a stage making hundreds of people laugh and all that stuff. Hmm. Like, yeah. Do they find you funny in the house? Or they oh, like, aye, 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 aye. I mean, it's a different type of aye humour. Like, there's very few times of <laughs> <laughs> not trying out your topical political <laughs> stuff out on no. the wank in the sharks. <laughs> 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 But it's the same with like when if if you, like if for any of us if your parents come and see you do it uh, yeah that's weird yeah like my folks have never seen me do it they've never seen you no. do it do you no. not let through them? their choice or yours kind so. of mutually assured destruction I just yeah. I don't know I never asked them they're cool about it and everything like if, if I was like oh, I'd like you to come it's important to me I'm sure they would have but... they seen you on telly though yeah yeah. But just never do stand up. You just think that like, it's just in the then, police. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're fucking thick. My mum and dad. They think it's real. That's surprising though, because it was like my mum and dad never seen me until I did the fringe, and that was when it was like a bigger deal than. I think people so think thought, that aye. the fringe is such an official thing, which yeah. it can be, but it's like, like how do you get, do that? Like, like just anyone, apply, yeah. like, literally yeah. anyone, anyone can do it. My mum and dad came to see me do. Uh, the fringe, like what the first year I ever done like a solo show, and it was uh, in that Barbados, and obviously it's a pure band building a lot yeah. of the year, and they think they got a bit of like, a shock at just like the state of the place, not yeah. And I think they like, really liked the show, which was quite shite then anyway. Um, so I just kind of said to them, "All right, like that, this isn't for you. It's just I'm wanting up to something, so like yeah. you just don't need to come every year. Come to the Kings, aye, come to the Kings, sort of thing. So they would like kind of came like they've." came enough over the years like when we first started I think when me and Stevie done a, a two-hander together like they came and yeah. you know when they've seen you a couple of times they get it and then it's just your job no company like the special Aye. occasions or something but yeah. uh, but no I never asked them back to the, the fringe after that basically <laughs> <laughs> well, some but of the fringe venues are I, awful. but it's amazing what you say like about folk that don't understand what the fringe actually is mm-hmm. like when I, the first year I did it um, I was even I was only doing a show then I was just doing sports and I still worked at Scottish Power and there was a guy that worked with us, and he, kind of, he was like, so what's, so what's the deal with the fringe? Do you just, like, pay at the door? And I was like, what do you think it is? <laughs> and he was like, so, like, when you get to Edinburgh, do you just pay to get in? And I was like, it's not fucking Jurassic Park. Get <laughs> what do you think this is? Like it's, I think he genuinely thought it was, like, one massive theme park where you uh, paid to get in and just wandered a bit. Like, but I, I can kind of see that, because the first time I ever went to the fringe, I must have been about... 17 or 18 yeah. with my pals and we didn't have a fucking clue 
what it was. We just thought... We wonder about the streets, don't know what, what's on. Aye, uh, we thought it was all like street, all the mad street performers mm. was the fringe and we're like, I went to the fringe, like, oh, who'd you go and see? Just a juggler and uh, <laughs> <laughs> a guy fucking eating swords and shit like that. Like, why did you not go and see comedians? <laughs> no. They guys so, amaze me, those, the street performer guys. Yeah. Like, just how you get your swap for that. I know it's every day, but I guess what they're doing—not doing that hungover, right? No, I, no feel, I mean eating fire. It's like comic. It's like comedians that are really enthusiastic all the stage. time. You know, like the comics where, like, everybody knows them. Comics that don't have any material, uh, but rely on their personality yes, entirely. Style. Yeah. How the not f- me. Fuck, do you do, <laughs> <laughs> no. How do, they joke, do that every day? Yeah, like because there must be some days you just go. I'm not feeling nah, funny. This is. I think that's why something you tend to find those guys will, will be always on as well, though. And I think it's because they must just live in a constant state of anxiety. Of like, Aye. If you don't have any material and your your job is to make people laugh, fucking man, good luck getting to sleep at night. Do you know what I mean? You mm. must be yeah. always on edge and shit. I, I mean, kind of admire the, like, the energy of like, getting yourself I could never fucking do that. Oh, aye. Christ, no. 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 I can't be asked. Who could be asked? Yeah. <laughs> no, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> But You're probably the most enthusiastic at the three of you. Me? I oh, it's not saying much to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got a tendency like to try and just kinda I, I think I always just want to make it feel presentable and like when I'm hosting and stuff, I probably go into that we kinda host the voice a wee bit when I should probably be a bit more authentic. But I think I generally just I'm just I suppose that's more kinda what I'm like generally anyway, just a bit more like upbeat and shit like that so I just I don't know I just want people to make sure that they're having a good time and feel you know it's like professional because I've not got any performing experience mm. so the least I can do is try and look like make it look like it's not a fucking shambles I suppose uh, yeah. as opposed to you too <laughs> <laughs> we're alright with shambles yeah no but you're presentable and you're, it's just different ways of coming at it do you know what I mean more you, so than I used to be certainly yeah because you always are like I don't know if you're the same but you're always preparing and going over your set and stuff yeah like I'd, back in the day i don't know if you still do it but yeah. i'm always kind of like i can't be fucked with doing my set in my room before going i'll just kind of see how it, it goes when i'm there Aye. but are you sort of do you nah, over prepare no? nah not at all because then i get um bored of it yeah very that's quickly I'm... and then i don't i've never understood folk that turn up at gigs with like a notebook with their set for that night i do that I, do you? Sometimes, like, I don't. So do you actually look at it before? I'm just terrified of forgetting. I write it down. I write it in a notes folder. It's just, if you go in my notes, it's just like the same thing written like yeah. fucking a yeah. hundred times. Yeah. But it's just, it's I feel so like awesome. if I write it, it's going to, yeah. even though like I fucking know my set. You know ah, I mean? That's what I was like, yeah. yeah but I yeah. suppose it's just a superstition. Just like a crutch I, almost, yeah, I yeah. I still write the set list on the hand, but I always hold the mic with that hand. So I never look at it. It's just... Yeah. It's just a superstition yeah. thing. Yeah. I go through phases of writing on my hand when I never ever look at it. I found yeah. sometimes the act of just writing, let's see if there's a new bit you want to try or something, just writing it on your hand is enough to help you remember it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you don't do it, you would maybe forget. Like sometimes I do it if it's like, say, some couple in the front will get spoke about, or like write down their names if I want to reference to them about something. Yeah. But um, I, I'll do that a lot, but I think it's, it's, I'll more do that with the set when I'm chopping and changing, you know, bits like, you know, putting a new bit so like going right I'll do I'm doing this gig to an Edinburgh and there's no Scottish people so I'll open with this and then mm-hmm. go into this sort of stuff like so I'll, I'll do it more just because I'm if I'm tinkering with it a wee bit I suppose I do it like Gary like at the Fringe during my solo shows Aye. I have notes on not on stage but like just by the side of the stage yeah right till the end because yeah. I know that was a long yeah. time and like, I can remember and yeah. it's like you say like by the end of it you know it off by heart and I've never ever looked at any of it but it's just that comfort and knowing yeah. it's there. Just so. I would have had you down as a setlist writer because your stuff's very, you know, it's very written, very jokey. But yeah, like... nah, never really. No, yeah. I never really written much down at all. No, even when you're like actually writing stuff, do you? Yeah, no, don't don't write a huge amount down. I just it's you just mostly, think of a joke. yeah, and mostly like it's weird because like uh, it's like one of those questions that's really hard to answer when people come up to you and go, how how do you write your stuff? And it's literally just going out, like having an idea or something. <clears throat> and then I'll go out on a walk and then Let you it. just start doing it in your head and then wee bits will spring off and yeah. the hardest thing I find about joke writing is a topic initially once if I've, if I've got a topic to talk about 
then it's a lot easier. But yeah. actually coming up with something to talk about is I'm yeah. having that exact very problem difficult. now where I'm like, right, I want to have some stuff about the news and all that, and then I'm like, what the fuck? Where do you, where do you start? Whereas what's good about when you do like something like breaking the news, some topical panel show hang, you get a brief. Mm. Yeah. It's like if somebody could give me a brief for my uh, own yeah. material. I, my own uh, absolutely, act, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. then all of a sudden you go, right, we need 10 fucking jokes on this and yeah. you can just yeah. batter away at it. But when you literally could talk about it's everything. It's the blank page, isn't it? How, just... do you, how do you pick, you know? Yeah. I guess that's what a director would be good at, wouldn't it? If they could mm. see your stuff and go, why don't you talk yeah. more about but, it? Mark, we bit less about the wanking with sharks. <laughs> 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 that's what the show is called. <laughs> <laughs> I've done I've had the poster done. <laughs> <laughs> Just the Jaws poster, but there's a big Bobby. (laughs) (laughs) Boz. Here's my question, Mark Knight. If you had to pick, right, one or the other, Jaws or Oasis at uh, Ballot? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, (laughs) If you could relive, well, I suppose you just watch Jaws again. Just say (laughs) for whatever reason you need to pick one. If I could mm. never listen to uh, Oasis again or never watch Jaws again, yes, yes. Yeah. I think I'd, I think I'd, I'd, I'd probably give up Jaws. Aye, because I never, guess Oasis has got so. Aye, so I've never up. been mad with watching Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> should so, uh, I should actually. That surprises me actually. Yeah, yeah. that surprises me yeah. now that I've said it yeah, out loud. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> again, I assumed you'd never watched it so much. <laughs> 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 like, he really likes this film. Man. <laughs> have it's you seen it in the cinema? I've seen it a couple of times in the cinema. It wouldn't have been out. What, when were you born? Uh, 80. Right, and that was 1975. Yeah. Yeah. It's my one fact I know about film. Um, <laughs> I took my son to see it a couple in of the weeks cinema? ago. I. How is it? A month and a half ago. Is it not like a fucking PG or something? It's a PG, but then there's hundreds of films. We watched the, you know, the Goonies. Aye. Um, that's a PG, right? The first scene in that is a guy hanging himself. <laughs> Or pretending wank. to hang yeah. in the street. Yeah. Like, the circle is complete. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mark. Um, I well, thanks a lot for, for joining us before uh, we wrap up. Um, do you want to, anything you want to plug particularly? I know you um, just sold out your two Aberdeen shows. Yeah, I've spot. got Glasgow in March. Yeah, the very last day of the comedy festival. The stand. stand. Yeah. Um, so there's not that many tickets left for that. Surprisingly. Uh, Snap them up. And uh, what else have I got? Uh, I'm, I'm going to start my podcast again soon. You've got the My Perfect Playlist. Yeah, it's, called. it's all about music. So I'm going to start that again. And I'm starting a podcast with Ryan Collins soon as well. Oh, aye? Yeah. Nice. What's that about? In... It's about it's about films. Oh, really? Yeah. We take a Fucking film. Neither of, <laughs> we take a film that neither of us have seen. <laughs> 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 uh, no, we're, we're going to do that because uh, we know about films. And I think I'm going to start a podcast on my own as well. Aye. Just doing topically kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to find something to occupy my I mind. I think, and... do you know, I think you'd be good at, like, see, like, if you were a day, basically a day, the fucking daily show or something, but, like, just for, like, clips online. That's what I'm going to do. Basically, do that. That's fucking yeah. would be yeah, brilliant, okay. I think. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Basically, doing exactly what I did for the, the stand live stuff. 100%. Aye. Just sitting them all in them or. My house, definitely. What's not uh, to like? So yeah. I, that's so yes, idea. that's what that's I've got. We'll look out for that. Follow Mark on social media as well. We'll put the links in the description and obviously snap. Oh, and the two up. specials as well. Oh, I, I, oh, I, 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 I was watching the most recent one uh, today. It's great. I, so you've got two specials on YouTube: a uh, comedian and the don't call it a comeback. Yes. Yeah, both one filmed at the stand, called the club, the other filmed at the hive. Yes. Uh, this. Uh, and they're both recent. They're both like within the last year or something, aren't they? Like, yeah, yeah, they've both come out. Aye, both in the last year. Aye. So, aye. And so, the, the one at the stand, you had some some nice dyed blonde hair, Mark. You ever? I did. Aye. Yeah, I, used, I, used really that, I used to do that. I used to. I know. I'm gonna do it again. Aye. I used to do it when I was younger. Um, I've always wanted to do it again. Like the M and M kind of thing. Yeah. People started doing it. I'm gonna try and grow my hair. Like this is yeah. yours is stunning thank you <laughs> did you have that but he's just trying to stop people See, calling have... him Stephen Buchanan <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it anyway Mark thanks again for, for no, joining cheers. us cheers for class man uh, check out Mark on all the stuff we've mentioned and as ever uh, please remember to like and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube give us a 5 star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and you can follow us at SomewherePod on Instagram TikTok and Twitter and you can also email us at SomewherePod at gmail.com but until next time guys speak to you later cheers, cheers. guys thanks Mark cheers Mark <laughs>